We all know that ancient legends and fairy tales often tell about huge men and women who were much larger and taller than us, as well as fought fiercely or devoured people. They describe them as lonely people living in the mountains or in a wooded area. These giants are described not only in fairy tales, but also in prehistoric texts and religious writings. The story of ancient Greece contains records of Hercules, David, Goliath, and other giants. I'm still wondering how accurate and true these legends are. First of all, let's see if there is any real evidence of the existence of these extraordinarily large people and whether it is possible to conduct any serious research on this issue to separate facts from fiction. The very first historical information about giants dates back to the time of the Sumerian civilization that existed at the beginning of the Bronze Age. As can be seen from the carved figures and statues, these Sumerians considered these giants to be their kings or gods, possessing incredible both physical and intellectual abilities. In addition, according to the Babylonian Chronicles, these kings had detailed knowledge of the solar system. This brings to us the question of where these giants came from. Ancient people called them gods, and it was believed that they arrived on arcs or ships and survived the Great Flood. According to scientists, the first prehistoric people could have been gigantic in size because before the Great Flood, atmospheric conditions on Earth were suitable for much larger people with a longer life expectancy. Environmental scientist Dr. Carl Bogue and his team conducted a biosphere experiment reproducing the atmosphere and the ozone layer around the Earth before the Great Flood, and the fish species they experimented on grew to much larger sizes than usual. This theory justifies the hypothesis of a large growth of prehistoric creatures. And since scientists have not yet come to a consensus about when people first appeared, the version that in prehistoric times they had gigantic growth in size has a right to life. In addition to the mentions of giants in the Bible, the works of the Jewish historian Flavius Josephus deserve special attention. Three of his books mention the existence of a race of giants. Apart from the Bible, these works are perhaps the most convincing argument in favor of their existence. All of these books feature stories of real people facing giants. Flavius Josephus, in an excerpt about how the Israelites moved their camp to Hebron, mentions that the Jews encountered the inhabitants of this land, including a race of giants who had such large bodies and such faces, completely different from other people, that they caused fear and terror by their very appearance. Today, many archaeologists are building versions and guesses about the origin of huge megalithic ruins around the world. Why did people need to build such huge living spaces, and how did they move stones weighing several hundred tons? The answer is simple. Either they had technologies that we don't know about, or they were so huge and strong that the construction of such monumental buildings was not difficult for them. In Peru, there is a stone riddle called Sacsayhuaman, the ruins of the citadel of the Inca era. Its huge stones, weighing up to 200 tons each, which were used for construction, were cut, installed, and fitted to each other with such precision that today it all looks like a giant stone puzzle. It is not difficult to imagine that a race of super strong giants was involved in the construction of this structure. Even now, thousands of years later, modern thinkers, engineers, and scientists cannot give an unambiguous answer to the question of how ancient man was able to build some of the most stunning megalithic monuments around the world. There are many reports that archaeologists have found very large bones, weapons, or other artifacts that only a giant could use. It is assumed that Stonehenge was built by giants because the stones are too large and heavy for people of ordinary height and physical strength to move and manipulate them without the help of special machines. Similar examples exist in many cultures when it comes to structures that could not be erected without cranes or other machines that ancient people did not have. 
However, these arguments of archaeologists should be treated skeptically. We may not know how Stonehenge was built, but our lack of knowledge does not automatically prove that giants did it. In 1891, workers digging the foundation of a new building in Arizona stumbled upon a huge stone coffin with a skeleton of about 3 meters inside. Later, in 1883, soldiers digging a hole in California came across the remains of a 3.5 meter giant with a double row of teeth in the lower and upper jaws. Giant bones have also been found in other countries. In Romania, for example, reports of giant human remains almost up to 5 meters high, discovered quite recently in the 70s, had a great resonance. The length of the leg bones alone reached 2 meters. These are just a few examples of giant footprints that were discovered by researchers, but they turned out to be so ancient that in the process of extracting them from burial sites, most of them turned to dust. The mummified remains of giants dating back thousands of years were also discovered, and their height varied from 2 to 4 meters. Most of these excavations were carried out in the 19th century. In addition, according to Stephen Quayle, underground tunnel dwellings with giant skeletons have been found throughout South America, the Middle East, and the Northwestern USA. The authenticity of this photo is still questionable, but who knows? Perhaps the giants that once existed looked exactly like this. Maybe they could even look like a giant in this photo. But scientists and historians do not have any scientifically proven facts confirming their existence at the moment. Some artifacts of gigantic size are exhibited in museums, but the vast majority of them, especially the largest and brightest examples, are in fact just a myth with the exception of eyewitness accounts, which cannot be verified. Many of the researchers explain the lack of irrefutable evidence with stories about their concealment by the government, flash floods, or build other convenient conspiracy theories. The conspiracy theory surrounding the vanished race of giants points to the assumption that the bones of their skeletons always mysteriously disappeared as soon as official organizations intervene. And there is still an acute question about whether giants actually existed on Earth, and if they existed, where did they go? Either they went the same way as dinosaurs and became extinct due to atmospheric conditions, or fought fierce battles and killed each other, as some historians claim, or became violent and hungry for power and wealth, like the inhabitants of many other ancient civilizations that destroyed themselves. Whatever it was, the question of the existence of giants still remains open and is fraught with many mysteries and riddles. We can only guess whether there were people before us who were completely different from us in height, size, and strength, or all these are beautiful legends and fiction of science fiction writers. Is it worth believing prehistoric chronicles and unconfirmed eyewitness accounts of real excavations of giant remains? Perhaps someday scientists will make sensational discoveries confirming the existence of giants or completely refute this theory. In the meantime, we can only guess.